Hi there, this is Suzanne in Ohio. Um, today I'm showing you a slow stitch kit that I just put up on my Etsy site a couple days ago. And I wanted this video from my own record and to show more clearly what it is. Now I realize my lighting is not terrific. I'm not sure what's going on in my room. I have no natural sunlight today. But I'll do my best to show you what's in here. I'm going to see if I can bring it down a little closer. Um, hold on a second. Oh, goodness. Boy, have I had the problems today. All right, I can't get my focus and zoom to change right now. Sometimes I just have to leave it alone for a little while. But what this kit amounts to is, I'll move this out of the way, um, a focal point item here, I'll explain that in a minute, a variety of laces, different colors, and three different flower print fabrics. But the real treasure is this vintage foundation that I created. Now the vintage foundation is uh, worked just as if I would do it. Um, always being able to turn it into a book cover or a wall hanging or anything of that nature. So here's what I have here on a Pellon foundation and a piece of muslin. I chose to use muslin inside this time to keep this from being too puffy. But I took some vintage textiles. I left all the lace and as much on them as I could. And all I did was stitch them in place. So if you would be interested in this kit, the foundation is already made. And then I was thinking of ideas of <clears throat> what to do with it. And I created this little um, focal point piece, I guess you would call it. I hand painted the watering can and then embroidered the flowers in the pot. And I just have it laying here on a piece of blue fabric that sets it off nice because there's other soft shades of blue in some of these textiles and that could be sort of like a matte frame around it and I was thinking if I were to do it myself I might do something like this just put it um, on there and position my laces there's lavender, blue, green, and pink because there's all those shades somewhere in this foundation. You could use these or not. And I would definitely cut down small snippets of them and place them in oh, spaces that don't, don't have much activity going on. For instance, you could sneak peek that out of the edge behind coming out from be, uh, around the mat. You could also cut up any of these flower prints also coordinate with all the colors that are in here. Now you could fussy cut the flowers out or leave them um, and make strips something like this and position them where you want them and then the real joy starts because it is definitely a slow stitch project. I'm not saying you couldn't do this on the machine, but I think the fun of it is the slow stitch. And so along with the other items, I have here an assortment of flosses that all go with the colors. The only thing I might reconsider is choosing a fabric for a brighter background. And I was thinking of a bright lavender or whatever. Now this is the wrong color, but let me just show you what happens to a piece like this 
well, it's not necessarily the wrong color, but what happens to a piece like this when you put it on a stronger contrast? So it really helps it pop. If you want to keep it muted and a little bit more, let's say, delicate looking, then stick with the lighter colors. And let's just for fun put the green sticking out around the mat. And that looks nice too. Now if you've done slow stitch before, I'm sure you've got lots of your own ideas what to do. You can do the typical slow stitch method that's so popular right now, which is really just a borrow type stitch in and out, in and out, in and out, very small, or a canvas stitch, which is exactly the same, only it's a longer, larger uh, stitch. I think this piece is too small and delicate to do actually a canvas stitch on. I would keep it a slow running borrow stitch. And I even like the look of when you go in, coming out right away with your stitch and letting more of the stitch show than the negative space in between the stitches. But you use your own um, ideas and method and then after you have things down the way you want them, consider some uh, variation of some, oh let's say embroidery stitches. For instance, I was thinking for myself, since this whole theme here is flowers, flowers on the textile, flowers in the watering can, um, if I had a negative space, say up here in this corner, I could do a big cluster of bullion stitches or anything like that that really set it off. Also, if you do want a fussy cut, these flowers or any you have of your own, you could consider stitching around the flower. And that really sets off a fussy cut uh, image if you embroidery around it. So um, it, it's all up for grabs however you want to do it. I would make a suggestion. If you've never done slow stitch before, you probably are not sure. And everybody's got a different opinion. So this is just simply my opinion and nothing is written in stone. But if you're going to slow stitch anywhere on this, I would use two, no more than three strands of the floss. It is just so delicate and you want your item to stay flat. And Using all six strands or more than three really is a very bulky look. And I like to save it for larger pieces where you need it to show like that. Now one more um, just little hint. When you stitch something like this down, make sure you pin it well because it will scoot and twist and do things like that as you're working. And if your pins get in your way, take the time to put some basting stitches in here and you'll be taking them back out again. And that will keep your item fairly straight and it won't tend to skew as you work it. And another pointer is to sew all the way through this foundation all the way through the pellon because the reason I put pellon on everything is it gives a place for your stitches to uh, seed in, to nestle in, and it keeps the front of it looking beautiful and it keeps everything flat. Um, you don't really want, I think, I don't, uh, your embroidery stitches to cause things to pucker up. If it remains fairly flat, then it shows off the embroidery so much better. For instance, let's look at this little piece here. Whoops. 
Um, I always put a piece of very lightweight Pellon behind anything I'm stitching on. And it makes the front look so beautiful. I'm trying to put it in some better lighting. All right. So there's your kit. And what comes along with this kit is also a piece of very plain fabric uh, for the backing. Now, because this is an irregular piece, uh, what I would do when I put the backing on is a little oversize it and then be very careful and trim it down. And don't be afraid to let the edges, let the edge of the backing come out here and back up behind all these irregular edges. That's a nice look. And because of the way this this is an old, old piece of eyelet trim, and you don't want to encase that. You don't want to really stitch it down all the way. When you stitch your backing on, oh, I've got a scrap there. I forgot to pull out. Uh, just stitch it to the piece of muslin, and then you've got a nice backing. And this is this piece is not appropriate for binding off like a quilt because you want all this lace to show. So let's just pretend like this is, here's a piece of parchment for lack of a better demonstration. You want that to come right to the edge because that's a solid edge. But on something like this, you want it to come down and back up most of the eyelid. But you only want to stitch to the muslin. So take a very light stitch and stitch your backing on. Now, if you're going to make a journal cover out of it, you want to choose a colorful fabric. I am sending along a piece of very plain fabric, thinking that you might leave this as a wall hanging, a textile piece of art. So use your creativity and create something gorgeous. I'm sure it'll be of heirloom quality and leave it to someone <laughs> that you know is really going to enjoy it. All right. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it. If you're interested in this textile kit, it is on my Etsy site and I'll put a link in the description. Thank you for watching and come back again soon because um, I have several videos to upload because I have really drugged my feet over the last several months and I have so many projects I would like to show and most of them, most of them have kits that go along with them. And if you enjoyed this, please consider uh, subscribing and leave me a like if it provided you with any interesting information. All right. Bye for now.